I am on a quest. I'm on a quest to find memory bandwidth, kinda, sorta, not really, but also that intersects with the thing that Supermicro just did. There's a new Epic motherboard that was just launched, but it might not make any sense to you because Zen 5 Epic processors launched last year. Why is another motherboard launching this year? The H14 SSL and its variants. It looks exactly like the H13, the H13 to the H14. What's the deal with that? And if you look in the specifications, the H13 can deal with 9004 and 9005, that's Zen 4 and 5 processors, whereas the H14 is oriented more toward Zen 5 only. What's up with that? The secret, mainly is 100 watts of power delivery. If you looked at those top end 128 core Epic CPUs and a couple others, it's all about 500 watts of power delivery. And this motherboard has been upgraded. It can now deliver 500 watts to those 128 core processors. I'm also on a bit of a submission here with the 9575F. The 9575F is a CTDP CPU of up to 400 watts, not 500 watts but it has dual GMI links from each chiplet. It's 64 cores, but each chiplet has two links to the IO die, not the usual one. And I think this is an upgrade over the uh, Threadripper like processors. It's like, oh, 64 core Threadripper with a single GMI link versus dual GMI link, but also 12 memory channels. This might be the ideal platform for AI. So I wanna test the 9575F in this, as well as the 128 core Zen 5 Monster. I take a closer look at this motherboard from Supermicro. Now, this is my old system based on the H13, and it is in a Silverstone case that we reviewed previously. This is a 5U rack mount Silverstone case, also with Silverstone AIO. Silverstone has pretty much the enterprise class AIOs that I've been happy with and I've been running for long enough that I've, you know, have done the tear down and it's like, is this AIO gunking up? And the answer is no. And this is also set up for SP5. If you notice, SP5 has quite a few more screws than their Threadripper equivalent. There are Threadripper versions of this, which, uh, you know, Threadripper 9000 just launched. And so Silverstone is showing off their AIOs for that. And they can certainly handle high wattage uh, configurations. But in this configuration, we're dissipating up to 500 watts of heat with some high CFM fans across the, uh, uh, you know, the radiator here. And yeah, that works pretty well. We've also got a Zeus 1650R titanium power supply in here, which is what I need in order to run two Blackwell Pro RTX 6000 GPUs, Blackwell based. Now, if we take a look at our motherboard layout here, especially versus the H13, it really doesn't look a lot different. Most of the stuff that you can see that's different is to do with delivering another 100 watts for power. However, there are also some changes to make DDR5 6400 a little more compatible. You see, when Zen 5 launched, um, it was a little weird with the memory speed. It was DDR5 6000, but there were certain qualified solutions from major partners like Supermicro that were qualified for up to 6400. But it was up to the system, you know, Supermicro to put together a complete system. This is CPU paired with this motherboard paired with this specific memory. And in my case, I'm running 6400 Samsung memory. I've run Samsung and SK Hynix. And SK Hynix, I think, has the edge here of pretty much all of the other memory in the industry, but the Samsung 6400 is also working well. And this is JetX 6400, not Expo. Remember, Epic does not support, not really, uh, Epic memory speeds. And so JetX 6400 is slower typically than Expo 6400. Those are different things. But this platform, this board, the H14 6400, Zen 5 Epic CPUs. And that was not a guarantee on the H13, just to be clear. I mean, a lot of the time it worked, but... I like things that are guaranteed when you're spending six, $7,000 on a processor. Now, the 9575F. The 9575F is a special little monster from AMD. It is an incredible CPU. It runs at five gigahertz basically all the time. And that's in its 400 watt power envelope. I really wish that AMD had allowed CTDP up to 450 or 500 watts, but 400 watts, hey, I'll take it. 4.8, 4.9 gigahertz under AI type workloads is what you can expect. It turbos a little bit more on our H14 and the H13, which tells me that, you know, 
all things being equal, that uh, CTDP of 400 watts is just a tiny, tiny little bit fungible because this board is about one and a half percent faster, give or take, even with the same dual rank memory configuration across both boards. So we may be running up a, in, in a situation where like maybe this board expects more airflow than it's getting in this case, and this case is slightly different. Don't know, could be that. It may not be down to the board design. It may be down to like VRM temperatures, things like that. But in the IPMI monitoring, there is nothing untoward that's happening. As this is a server motherboard, it has you know A speed for remote management. Uh, this board is available in a couple of different configurations. You can have onboard 10 gig if you want um, or not. You know, it, It's up to you for vari variations on the H14 SSL motherboard. That's the you know TNT and whatever Supermicro is producing. This one is very, very hot off the presses. I, I didn't even get the IO shield because it was like, hey, I need one of these. Please send it. And they were like, okay, yeah, sounds good. So they sent me this, this one even before I could buy one on Newegg. That one came from Newegg. So, you know, whatever. It has five PCIe slots, a mix of X8 and X16. And you also have three eight lane MCIO connections. You also have eight SATA ports, including two that support SATA DOM and will give you power off of the board for server configuration and that sort of thing. You got 20 pin, five gigabit front panel connections. There's no front USB-C connection. This is truly a server motherboard and it is meant for server levels of airflow. If you're gonna go off road and try to build a workstation around this, you're gonna need a workstation that has a lot of airflow. I mean, the VRMs here, if you look at like the VRM situation versus a desktop board, this looks absolutely anemic. It's not, the difference is that in a desktop board design, board designers don't really expect a ton of airflow in the system. Meanwhile, server designers expect there to be so much airflow that the server sounds like a leaf blower. And so that's, you know, oh, we just need a couple small heat sinks because there's going to be 50 CFM flowing over the VRM at any given time. Not really, but that's kind of the difference here. And yes, even though this is a 5U case with two giant intake fans, Silverstone has provisions for mounting a 360 millimeter AIO in the front. So you can have a short depth 5U server that is going to be able to handle 500 watts of CPU plus 600 watts or two of GPU. Now, if you are gonna run a fully loaded configuration like that, there's an optional fan assembly that goes here that I would strongly recommend. And your 1650 watt power supply may not be enough. That means that you're looking at 220 volts as your input voltage in order to uh, push past the 1600 watt limit that you run into with the 120 volt North American breaker. If you're at 110 volts in the region that you're in, uh, you, you 1600 watts, you're not gonna get 1600 watts. You're gonna have to go to 220 anyway. This CPU, a lot of the real estate is taken up by the 12 memory channels in the CPU socket. So you've only got a total of five slots. However, we do have three MCIO connectors at the front. Now the MCIO connectors at the front, each one of those can be broken out into two NVMe connections, or uh, you can even do the eight lane, you know, E3 type slots, or you can go back to more PCIe. I can add two Blackwell GPUs to this platform linked at X8 with this expansion board, which is relatively affordable and still not have used any of my PCIe slots on the board. You can get creative adding PCIe connectivity. You can also use it for storage. So like our Solidime 122 terabyte SSD, our D5 P5 336 will connect right up. This is a Gen 4 SSD, but these headers are Gen 5 capable. You may need retimers or redrivers to get a good clean PCIe Gen 5 signal. Ideally, those are going to an NVMe backplane and some type of chassis somewhere. Maybe check out IC dock for that kind of stuff because you can go from those headers to an IC dock dock in a DIY server solution. But this could make a lot of sense for that AI workstation platform. All right, let's talk memory bandwidth for a second. One of the whole reasons to go with this platform is AI on CPU. We've been doing videos on hybrid setups where we have a GPU and CPU working together to run mixture of experts models. And this is particularly applicable specifically to mixture of expert models because mixture of expert models typically have dense layers and layers that aren't so dense. You can run the dense layers and the KV cache uh, and uh, you know your input processing actually on a GPU with sufficient VRAM and then everything else can spill off into the rest of the system. We've also found that if you're running a very large model in a two socket system, that typically there's not enough bandwidth between the sockets to really fully utilize the CPU. I mean, to be sure, there is no other faster option to add more memory. It's just that you tend to run the AI CPU jobs on one CPU 
and the other CPU is not really doing much on the AI side of things. It's just second fiddle to memory and IO requests from the first socket. So in this configuration, we have 12 memory channels, and so we can add a lot more memory. And some motherboards that have two DIMMs per channel, that's an option, but you also need speed because the amount of AI that you're able to do on CPU is almost entirely bottlenecked down to memory speed. And so I really want 12 channels of 6400, and I'm not gonna get 6400 if I'm running two DIMMs per channel. So that makes this motherboard particularly well suited. The 9575F is also particularly well suited to memory bandwidth stuff because you have so much memory bandwidth from the chiplet uh, to the IO die, two channels as opposed to one. And so even though it's only 64 cores, not 96 or 128, and even though I'm not power gated with that CPU on this particular motherboard, I still think this motherboard is a better choice if for no other reason than I have had better luck running JetX 6400 so far on the H14 than the H13. And that may be down to just the processor and configuration and other details. It's not necessarily, I can't lay the blame for that at the board conclusively, but newer in this case is actually better. Now on the flip side, if you want 128 cores, this is the choice. This is the board for you. The H13 will power gate the 128 core Epic and the 192 core for that matter, the 192 core Zen 5C. This is the motherboard that you would need to run a single standalone Zen 5C. This is also a great test or pilot vehicle for evaluating Zen 5 versus Zen 5C. Does your workload scale? and? Can you run it with a lot of cores? Zen 5C, obviously the clock ceiling is gonna be a lot lower. AMD is targeting maximum efficiency with Zen 5C cores, but you have 192 cores. And so you need a 500 watt power budget. This is a great platform for evaluating if a 192 core Zen 5 processor is going to work for your, your workload. If you don't want to get, you know, a fully configured system from somebody else, or you need a, a system on a desk that, you know, developers or integrators in your organization can play with. 128 Zen 5 cores are um, monstrous and sort of sort of nuts. For the AI testing that we're doing with IK Llama, I was a little surprised that the 9575F is often a better choice. I mean, in terms of raw compute, you have double the number of Zen 5 cores and you get almost double the performance. But don't forget the 9575F can clock up to five gigahertz. That is a substantially higher maximum frequency clock over the 128 core CPU. So for things that don't really scale, like you can run it on 64 cores, but maybe not 128, uh, it's a pretty good fit. This has been a quick look at the Supermicro H14 SSL. I wanna do a couple more videos because this might actually be a an alternative to a Threadripper workstation just because of the memory bandwidth if we're talking AI. If that's something you're interested in, hit us up in the forums, look for those threads, uh, because I need to put together some more tests and, and do something beyond just IKLlama.cpp. But I can tell you for IKLlama.cpp mixed with a single Blackwell RTX Pro 6000, <laughs> this is the platform with the memory bandwidth. But you know, that's not the whole story. So stay tuned and get subscribed and all that kind of stuff. I'm Windows Level 1, I'm signing out. You can find me in Level 1 Forest.